I mean, I was on a project once and the person, they would not answer my calls. They would not make a decision. And after a while, it became clear the team was new. They didn't understand the system that they were on. They didn't have a clue. They were still learning. Once it became, oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay, let's work together. Explaining what the system does. We shared how it worked now, what the vision was. They were much easier to deal with. They just needed to have us hold their hand a little so more. So to be a change leader requires you to understand people, you know, and also listen. If you don't listen to people, it doesn't matter how great your change is going to be because they're going to reject it outright. As BAs, we're change leaders and people have to think of that as you're a leader. You're not just taking orders from someone. You have to take people where they are and move them forward and not to say, we're going to do this project and you're coming along with me. I've seen that too. It doesn't work or it doesn't work successfully. Let's put it that way. It's painful. Welcome to the Inside Business Analysis Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Jacobs, and today I am joined with Mufaro Yachoto. Mufaro, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for letting me join your podcast. I'm looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> so am I. So am I. I'm really happy that you're here, and um, I'm so excited for our conversation. So, Mufaro, you are a you wear many hats, you know, you've been in this space for over 20 years, business consulting, business management, project management, change manager, business architecture. I mean, it just rolls off the tongue in terms of your experience and the kind of things you've been working in. You are also a president for the IIBA in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Um, and so it's safe to say that you know your stuff around business analysis. Um, if you if you had to kind of sum up your career in kind of one succinct word what word would that be change <laughs> which is incredible which is incredible because today's conversation is actually about change for enough i didn't <laughs> i didn't tell i didn't pay you to say that just to be clear but today's conversation is about how do we as bas kind of become these change leaders and change managers so with that said then you know you spoke about summarizing your career in in change, this one big word. Um, can you just maybe explain to us then, from a business analysis perspective, what does it mean when people say that a business analyst is a change leader or a change agent? Oh, that's really good. Um, you know, I really love the fact that pace is changing everywhere. I mean, years ago was that sort of, oh, change is this, you have to have this many things in your head. Now we can't even figure out how much change is. <laughs> Every time you turn around, Something's new, you know, from Gen AI to web programs and thing to, you know, what we have to learn. So I think it's important as change agents, and I like change leaders better because all change, I think, is about people, not technology. And people, I think, sometimes forget that. And, you know, people are so diverse. And I think to be a change leader, you have to understand people sometimes just don't like change. <laughs> there are people who don't like change. There's a lot of ambiguity. People like to be comfortable. It's that sort of, you know, force thing. If you push people, you better give them some really good push because people want to stay where they are. They are grounded. So to be a change leader requires you to understand people. You have to understand and be able to communicate why do we want this change? What's the benefit of this change? What's that great future we're going to look at in the future? And I think people, if you can understand, be self-aware of yourself and of people and sort of say, okay, here's the benefits. Here's, you know, and also listen. If you don't listen to people, it doesn't matter how great your change is going to be because they're going to reject it outright. Just, you know, resistance is part of life. So I think as long as we are as BAs, building relationships, communicating, being that trusted advisor, sort of, I see you, I hear you, this is where we need to go. And you're sort of neutral. Don't jump on one side or the other. I think you'd be, we're change leaders and people have to think of that. As, you're a leader. You're not just taking orders from someone. You understand, you communicate, you work. <laughs> wow. That is such a, that is such an insightful uh, perspective there. And so on that point then about being change leaders and being change leaders, being more people focused in terms of the change that it means to the people, as opposed to, I don't know, this is a, a simple software upgrade or a, a system implementation or pro process improvement project is actually more of a people improvement project. Um, where, what, 
where, where do we begin then? Because because I think of when I think of business analysis, you know, we start off with kind of stakeholder uh, uh, stakeholder identification and then stakeholder management, but it's usually from the perspective of delivering the technical change. But how do we begin to kind of adopt this mindset of actually I, I'm a change leader? You know, what would you say to 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 kind of help BAs to think change leadership in their minds in their minds? I think the most important thing is to, instead of jumping to a solution, realize you have to collaborate with people. So if you were better able to understand, okay, why is this vision? Can you communicate that to someone else? Or you just, you know, someone told me to do this, so you do it. Understand why. Figure out the benefits. Definitely do that stakeholder engagement. Go figure out who you need to talk to, you know, map it out, understand who you serve understand who's going to benefit, understand who will benefit negatively or positively because <laughs> I, I was on a project once and it was fascinating. They had all this money, they got to the end and there was one woman, they forgot to include her and she killed a project that was, you know, years in the making. It was like, why didn't you ask her? Well, we didn't think she had that. She was that powerful. It's like in the end, she did kill a project. <laughs> so you have to really understand people. <laughs> and <laughs> I know that was so sad. But, you know, you have to understand people are going to have reasons. Understand and ask them for their input. You know, what about this project concerns them? Give them a voice. (laughs) And I think if you do that, most of the time you'll be successful. Also be that champion. So figure out what's in it for them. You know, how are they impacted? Try to make sure you're, you're not... You want to be new. You're Switzerland almost, <laughs> but they are now. But you know, you want to be able to um, communicate the benefits down the road and just kind of hold their hand. You have to take people where they are and move them forward, and not to say mm. we're going to do this project mm-hmm. and you're coming along with me. I've seen that too. It doesn't work, or it doesn't work successfully. Let's put mm. it that way. It's painful. No, you want to no. reduce pain points, not create them. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so so let, let's break this down a little bit into terms of different stakeholder groups. So first of all, I want to come to that woman that you mentioned and similar people. So as BAs, we do work with uh, decision makers and people who have got the power to decide yes or no on certain things. Mm-hmm. And so, but equally speaking, we are not the decision makers. We are not the ones with authority. Even though we are leading the change, it's not up to us, right, to say this is going to happen. It's up to the decision makers to do that. So how can we then as business analysts kind of be able to effectively influence key decision makers when we are leading change? I think the best thing to do is make sure you do your research, have data. People make decisions, good decisions based on data and facts. So go out and do your research. Go and collaborate with people. Ask people who are impacted what they think. Get their insights. Um, drop a good story. You know, people right now, it's big on storytelling. Be able to tell that story from why this, what's the benefit, what are we going to get to, who's impacted. Make a compelling story. People love stories. They'll remember that. And then I think it's also about build that relationship. So when you have something that you want to present, People will listen to you. They understand who you are. They trust your vision and your what you stand for. So they say, yeah, I think I'll go and ask them. They have a, they have a viewpoint. They know what's going on. They know what's going on with the operations and the you know, people we don't often engage with. So if you do that, you're that trusted advisor. And they'll be like, yeah, we'll keep you in those loops. I think sometimes people do forget that part. Even the operations people, yeah, the operational people do have a viewpoint. And I think sometimes we forget that they're, yeah. you know, we get a team and did you include that person? They probably know something that you need to know. So you have to include them also. It's stakeholder identification. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. So when it comes to influencing key decision makers, it's about arming ourselves with as much information, knowledge, mm-hmm. data, facts as we can, so that when we are presenting them with, you know, an overview picture, we can point to the key relevant things that they need to be able to make effective decisions. But in order for us to then understand the, you know, the knowledge, the insights, and maybe even the facts and the stats, we, as you've touched on, we need to then work with the operational staff. So then, which is another 
group of stakeholders in my mind. And 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 what would you say are some of the tips when engaging with operational teams and and particularly those I'm thinking about those who potentially might be a bit nervous and maybe even resistant to the change. You know, how can we kind of work with them and take them on this journey of change? Because let's be honest, the decision makers are making decisions, but right. nine times out of 10, that decision impacts the operational staff member. And so they, they really feel the brunt of the change. So how can we work with them in that? I used to love to ask them what they do and see if I could shadow them. <laughs> so, you know, what do you do? Mm. Just out the, outright ask them if they're willing to let you, you know, sit with them for a couple hours, find out what they do, who they engage with. You know, they are, they're they usually are really deep into the work and people kind of ignore it because work gets done. They're not on projects. Some of that work is not yeah. considered sexy or whatever. So they don't get a lot of feedback. <laughs> they mm-hmm. don't get a lot of exposure. So give them a voice. You know, what do you need? What's your pain points? How do you feel about this? Try to make sure that their viewpoint is visible to higher levels. So that's another one of those build that relationship, you know, get data from them, collaborate. And they will tell you, you know, they will be your greatest resource. If you let them, they will champion what you need to get done at their level. So people will buy in and do it because buy-in is very important, mm-hmm. you know, or, the, or if you do a change and you don't get anybody on, all, everybody on board, even the lower levels, that change is going mm-hmm. to die or people will be doing, you know, the old thing behind the back. You just won't know it. So it's always good to include as many people. And remember, you're a stakeholder. We're, we're, as BAs, we're stakeholders, but everybody operations, leaders, there are different stakeholders. So that identification piece is so important. And just realizing everybody is valuable and needed on a team to bring success. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and just really quickly on that point that you just made there around, um, you know, the, the value of the people who are doing the work and getting them on board and getting that buy-in. Do you have any tips on how to get stakeholder buy-in? Because, you know, that is certainly something that happens quite frequently in projects, really. And, and like, I, I'll i be honest, I used to think that getting stakeholder buy-in would mean kind of just selling the project and they just had, you know, just had to be like, oh, yeah, that does sound like a good idea. But genuinely speaking, most, most people that I've encountered who may on the surface appear to be resistant to the change usually have valid points it's not mm-hmm. necessarily that they're just being difficult for the sake of it they have valid points that they f- they are concerned about and um yeah so if, if imagine i'm in that position i'm working on a project but i've got a, a stakeholder or a group of stakeholders who are you know they don't want to buy into the project but the points that they're raising are valid how how what can i do in that position i think the Biggest thing you can do is capture all of those, you know, facilitate a session, ask them what their concerns are, try to understand what's that impact, do a change analysis impact. I'm like, how does this affect this project? How does this affect this decision down the road? Make sure you understand that piece and capture that and be able to present that with data back to the decision makers. You know, they might not get what they want, but make sure that they are heard and people understand why are they resisting? Yeah, because a lot of people, you're right, they don't, they're not resistant to the project, but there's something that's going to either break or be not optimal anymore. Maybe there's something that they know, but you just didn't capture. So it's important to make sure we do that analysis. We've captured their, you know, what they have to say and represent them. We're supposed to be as, as BAs neutral. We represent stakeholders, groups, different across. It's not just the leader told me to do that. I'm going to do it. We have to make sure everybody is heard and represented. And we factor that into our analysis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So again, coming back to your earlier point that you made earlier about, about making them effectively, giving them a platform to be heard and giving mm-hmm. them that, that, that ability to voice their opinions, but not just to kind of bounce off the wall, but you you take it in, you incorporate it within the work that you're doing, and then they see that. And then that's how you mm-hmm. potentially get that buy-in. And uh, uh, I can see that, I can see that. Um, another another uh, thought that I had as well regarding kind of managing and dealing with, with, with uh, stakeholders is... Um, is is around uh, we always i guess we always think about this from the perspective of dealing with difficult stakeholders and getting their buy-in but 
do you have any tips on how to convert stakeholders who are excited about the project into like really championing the project in their teams? I, th- I think sometimes people are like, yeah, that's a good idea, but they're almost they don't actively do anything. They kind of leave it to you as a BA or the PM to shout out about it to the wider world. But how, how you know, do you have any tips on how to then get people who, who are in agreement with the project, but to kind of get them to also kind of spread the word across to their teams and their departments as well, so that the project has that kind of ripple effect of everyone's really engaged with the change? Yeah, because that's really important to make sure the change is well communicated throughout. I think the best thing is to just ask Say, hi, I want to consider you to be a champion, make up a project team sort of thing and put them on it and say, you're my champion. And then check in with them, make sure that they're included, you know, maybe make a matrix and make sure they're on that communication plan so that they know ex- what's happening at the level. Say, hi, or if they ask for people to, uh, if they want you to go out to people and do a presentation to a group, go do that presentation and be transparent as you can and explain it to them, you know. So you just work with them. So that's the best way because they know how, you know, they know who they work with. Mm. They know how they need to be communicated to. So if they want to, you know, bring you along with them, that's great. Maybe you can do a session. You can go and make sure they're on a newsletter, a slide, whatever it takes to make sure that they feel seen, heard, and they can really, you know, understand what's Mm. going on and champion that project. Because, yeah, if you're one person championing a project or two, you're not going to get very far. It'll take you a lot longer, but you want to get, Full buy-in, no. yeah, get as many supporters and champions. <laughs> the, and the reason why I asked that, Mufara, is because I remember earlier on in my career, I, I felt like my role as a business analyst was to be that champion, but I almost never really, I never really kind of leaned on other people. And so I felt the brunt of a lot of a lot of things, and then eventually kind of realized that it's it's not up to me, you know, by myself. <laughs> yeah. But I learned that the hard way, and, and I asked that because you know there may be BAs listening to this who are kind of thinking, you know, yeah, I, I'm getting the project, I, I really agree with it. But actually, you've been in a much more powerful position if you have other people as well who are equally yeah. as passionate about it as you are especially from the business because they are the ones who are going to be living the change. You know, once the change is delivered, I'll move on to the next project, but they will be living yeah. it. So if they are passionate about it whilst you're delivering it, you, you're actually putting the project in a much more safer hands, so to speak. That's true. Yeah. You, hey, they will be living with it after. That's true. We, we move on and hopefully we look back, but you know, often yes, we do. case of change and work, we just have to keep going. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. So apart from, Dealing with sta- dealing with difficult stakeholders, as we've touched on, are there any other common challenges then that business analysts face when they are leading change? Uh, sometimes people don't understand what what is a BA. Why are you here? Are you just trying to put up a roadblock? Uh, there's a lack of formal authority. I've had people say BAs are not leaders. They just want to just kind of squish you into the team mm. and say you're not that leader. Why aren't I leader? So we have to make sure that we are prepared, we know our stuff, you know, we're communicating, we are seen, we have a voice <laughs> so that we can go up and down. So, um, yeah, because, you know, we don't have to have formal authority. We have to be able to build trust. We have to be able to communicate well. We have to be able to listen. We have to be able to kind of, to, I sort of think of it as hold a vision of what we need in the future and how to work there and not you know, not get insulted when people go, you're not a leader or sometimes you'll get people who just are just, maybe they're overworked. They just don't want you in their face and they just keep mm-hmm. pushing back or ignoring you. You've got to be positive and just, you know, build that relationship. Try to understand at what stage are they? Why are they there? I mean, I was on a project once and the person, they would not answer my calls. They would not make a decision. And after a while it became clear, the team was new. They didn't understand the system that they were on. So us asking them to make decisions, they didn't have a clue. They were still learning. How did they know what they were going to be breaking? So yeah. once it became, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's work together. Explaining what the system does. We shared, mm. you know, how it worked now, what the vision was. They were much easier to deal with. They just needed to have us hold their hand a little more. <laughs> but they weren't going to tell you, I don't know. You yeah. just have to kind yeah, of yeah. listen and, you know, figure it out. <laughs> So we've got to be a little bit of a sleuth and a detective and open to how can I get this person 
to engage with me and how can I help them and how can they help me? <laughs> that is such a good example of as you what the things you touched on about building trust, listening and communication being key skills. Um, because often when we are working with stakeholders on projects, it's not what they say. Sometimes it's what they don't say, mm-hmm. what they don't do yes, that it. you pick up on. And then you start to be like, okay, okay, I'm really noticing what the real issue here is here or what the real barrier is here. Um, or even not understanding that there's a lack of communication or lack of understanding of what exactly mm-hmm. it is that we're trying to do. Um, so, yeah, I love that. Um, a- another thing that we have to do sometimes as change leaders and business analysts is have difficult conversations with these stakeholders that we are leading on this change. And sometimes, you know, that might mean telling them that the thing that they really want is out of scope of what we're doing. Yeah. Or maybe even saying to them the thing that they really want to hold on to is going to go when this project delivers. Any tips on how to handle these difficult conversations and how to hold them effectively? Uh, I think the best thing is to prepare yourself, understand what is that system why do they want that? What are we trying to offer them as a replacement? I remember once I had to explain to someone why their project was going to, their work was going to change because they had shadow databases and we weren't going to allow shadow databases anymore. And you know, why? Because the data they were using wasn't good. We didn't know what they were communicating out, that sort of thing. There was no traceability. And they were like, but we need this. It works faster. And part of the process was, oh, you need to get this out of the database. But you can't get a, you know, you can't get a programmer to pull your data. Oh, and you, okay. So then it ended up being, we developed a solution after, you know, going back and forth between developers and these people. Oh, they could get this Apex module that would pull data from the main database. It would write it back up. So they didn't have that delay. So once it was, you could still do your work. We understand you're heard. Here's a solution. Everybody worked on it. It was great. So we, you know, general database was mm pretty much done away with so it's sort of like you have to listen you really have to listen you have to be able to Mm. just sort of be neutral and think you've got to be creative and innovative what can we offer how can i partner with you know the developers can they help me come up with a solution present it so you know there's usually a way you just have to don't be stuck in what we have immediately don't be stuck in this is how it's always been done. And sort of open your, you know, open your mind, reach out to other people, build that team. And kind of, hi, this is what they need. Can you help me? And then, you know, it's kind of fun, actually. It's kind of like a puzzle. I think that's one of the best things about business analysis. Nothing is written in stone. <laughs> There's not just you can do this or that. It's sort of what do we need? How do we get there? Try to bridge that gap. And I just love that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I love it too. I love it too, and I love I love your perspective on on change and 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 on business analysis being change leaders, um, and and breaking that down. Um, just just a, a a slight pivot here is that I did re- read even in the IIBA twenty twenty three Global State of Analysis Report, um, which is published obviously by the IIBA. Um, where they said that there is a rise in demand for business analysis skills. Do you do you think that that's because of this change leadership perspective that you're talking about here, of the fact that there is a lot of change happening left, right and centre, more than we can keep up with, that leads to kind of this demand in the work in the in the um in the marketplace for business analysis skill sets? I think it does. I think the business analysis skill set is so large i mean there's communication there's relationship building there's stakeholder analysis there's change there's planning and i think companies really need you know with their resources they need to figure out how can we get things done successfully how do we not redo that project again and again and i think that's leading to them realizing um they need somebody who can jump in user innovation creativity their management of people be trusted advisors, you know, see the vision, work towards it. So there's, you know, that communication piece, there's the stakeholder management, there's analysis, there's data, there's all sorts of pieces that go into that and being successful to deliver, you know, really good value, successful. Here's what we need. We deliver value. We have to be able to work with people. We have to be able to work with systems. And I think that makes us extremely valuable if we see it. 
<laughs> everybody sees that at times, but I think that's part of it. Mm. I know in the last couple of days, I've had conversations mm. with people about they want to become business analyst. And I'm thinking, interesting, because I remember years ago, mm. I don't think I've had as many conversations. It was more like everybody wanted to be maybe a project manager or they thought BAs have to become project managers. And <laughs> it's like, no, you don't. Like, we're not, it's not like we're this little baby thing moving up. We're our own discipline. We bring a lot of value. So we have to be able to communicate that. <laughs> sometimes it feels like that, you know. And I think sometimes companies have been jumping over, like, they took out the business analysis titles and made them other things, you know, specialists, whatever. Everybody's a project person. But are you then leaving a gap? We're all doing products. Are you leaving that gap where business analysis is filling, you know? Yes, they do projects. They products they've got. They you know they have to take care of their teams and do safety and all that. BAs do that too. But are we really missing a piece now by going? Everyone's this or this or that. So we fill in that gap. You know, we can be very innovative. We can build that trust. We communicate. We can fill the gap. So I think that's really important. I think that's why BAs are coming back around again. I've seen the title more. It's not like okay now we have to back off all that. Everybody's mm-hmm. got to be agile thing. We have to. Go back to foundation. On that topic, just really quickly then, uh, you mentioned that a lot more people are obviously becoming attracted to the business analysis mm-hmm. space. and But also also what you did there was kind of break down, you know, kind of the, how breadth and broad the BA profession is and just how much, I guess, work and um, expectations are on the business line is to be able to lead change and deliver change successfully in organizations. So I've got a question for you, Mufaro. Do you, do you think that anybody can become a business analyst and um, why or why not? <laughs> uh, I sit through these conversations on people's webinars. These go, I kind of cringe. Okay. I will say, and I've seen so many programs popping up and people saying they want to be one. I don't know if they actually, but I will say anybody can be a business analyst, but can you be a good business analyst? <laughs> one of my jobs I was hired on, mm. I remember this woman, she was she was dying to be a BA. She was really, she was very social. She had great communication skills. People loved her. And I remember saying to her once, um, we, you know, she was capturing all sorts of information. I said, you should Make sure you validate that and challenge them. She said, why should I challenge them? And I said, they don't actually, they may not know what they want. You might find something better. She said, but they're telling me what they do. They tell me what they want. And I said, we're not order takers. They said, we need to provide value by making sure we get the best solution. We get, and so she, you know, that's kind of interesting. So can anybody be a BA? Yes. But I think you also need to then partner with other BAs, like join IBA, find other business analysis. And say, hi, what do you do? Figure out the nuances. Be willing to become an advisor and put your neck out. (laughs) If you see something, you know, ask questions, make suggestions. So I think that's the difference between a good BA and a BA. But yes, anybody can strive to be a BA and become one. But I'd like to see us continue to elevate the discipline. You know, let's get better and better. So people go, instead of going, Oh, but he says, how about we want to be BAs because BAs, they belong in that C-suite. They know what they're doing. They're going to make sure we get to what we need, not just anybody, you know, like do my eight hours and I'm done. <laughs> so I'm big on people getting all that, you know, go join an organization, go to webinars. So <laughs> get certified, you know, not the best practices. <laughs> So anybody can come into the door of business analysis effectively and, and get inside yeah. the world of business analysis, but then you, but then not everybody can just immediately become a good business analyst. You almost there's mm-hmm. almost a, another, another I guess journey to go on to not just, just get keep, in the job, keep developing, keep going, actually yes. becoming a good <laughs> business analyst. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, well, that's I think, I think that's a powerful <laughs> that's a powerful statement actually. No, I think that's a powerful statement, actually. I do think that's a powerful statement. I think what it speaks to is that maybe if I, maybe I don't get myself in trouble here. I think what it speaks to is that and the barrier to entry to get a BA job might be lower, mm-hmm. but the expectations to them deliver high quality business analysis is still, the bar is still high on that part. Yes. 
So um, yes, <laughs> that, that's that's what I'm getting from what you're saying, to be honest. So yeah, but no, I've, I I think you know I think that's a, a very a very insightful perspective. Um, so circling back to the IIBA, you have been a the president there for the last three years. How's that been? It's been interesting. We we're actually getting more and more people interested. A lot of entry level people are coming through the door. And for I was like, wow, are all the BAs disappearing in the Bay Area? Because there are companies that years ago there were sponsors and everything, and they've just gone, we don't really have BAs. So I think they're realizing that they do need BAs. BAs did not go away. They just were renamed, you know, pushed here and there. So I really love when people go, hi, I'm a new BA, and I'm trying to really, you know, advance. And you can kind of say, you need to have a tribe. Go find that tribe. Go find the BAs that are doing it will support you go get education you know follow webinars follow podcasts follow your podcasts because you know i really love hearing what other people are doing there's not one way to be a ba there's not just like we're all bas we do this and this and this and this you know there are people who probably never written a requirements document (laughs) you get requirements elsewhere Mm -hmm. you know yep but it's sort of like i understand that there's a lot of width you know depth and breadth you can choose what you want to be in there Every industry pretty much has a BA. You know, I tend to stick in the healthcare and education space. That's what I really like. But go find out what makes you happy. Go, you know, go to conferences. I've gone to some really great conferences and learned some really great things and met really interesting people. And I think it's made me a better BA mm-hmm. because it makes you think, what should I learn next? What don't I know? Oh, I didn't think of that. So I think it's really important to just keep elevating the profession. And as an IBA, you know, hasn't been around as long as some other organizations, but they're doing a really great job of putting out content for people. You know, some of it's free. Some of it you have to be a member to get the really good stuff. I love their global state of analysis report. I was like, hmm, I wish I could see the breakdown for all the regions, sort of like, you know, it goes U.S. and this. It's like, can you break this down more? Because <laughs> I'm just dying to see. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to uh, give back because when I was starting out, I really, really wanted to see more BAs. And so there was not a chapter like within mm. my neck, 20 miles. I had to drive I think, like 40 miles, get out of work, get out early, drive down there. But the conferences, you know, the people were amazing. I learned so much from different things and they had great speakers. And I think that's really important. So you might have to go out there and give up some free time and <laughs> develop yourself, but it's really great. And I think I saw that you had put out a list of resources. That was really good. I actually <laughs> looked at that. So go and do your research. Other people have done research. Go find who has that sort of stuff and go through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Let's elevate this analysis so it's with everything else. <laughs> exactly that. And I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, Mufaro, it has been such a pleasure talking to you today. I've really enjoyed our conversation and I've really enjoyed your perspective on change leadership and how us as BAs are leading change in in the work that we're doing and, um, you know, breaking that down for us and helping, empowering us really as listen, as the business analyst space to deliver change in a way that actually will stick with the organization, not necessarily just ticking a box to say the project is delivered. So really, really, that's one, my, that's my key takeaway from this uh, conversation. If anyone is listening to this and they'd love to connect with you and, you know, maybe take in a virtual coffee uh, and if they are from the Bay Area, maybe they'd like to have a chat with you in in person about the IIBA and the work (laughs) that you're doing there. Where is the best place for them to get in touch with you? Oh, you can easily find me on LinkedIn or if you put my name and there aren't too many of the photos in the Bay Area, I should come up. So I would love to have a virtual coffee and find out what people are doing in the Bay Area. It's such a big space between Silicon Valley healthcare and education. It'd be awesome. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I've really enjoyed this conversation. So have I, so have I. And I will put your LinkedIn uh, URL in the show notes of this uh, of this uh, episode so people can click to it and connect with you. Thank you. Mufara, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for your thank you for your wisdom. Thank you. <laughs>